Welcome to the Jim Florentine Comedy Metal Midgets Podcast on Riotcast.com. All my podcasts will be up on my YouTube channel, Jim Florentine. So if you don't do iTunes and all of the bullshit, Stitcher Radio, Riotcast, if you don't go through those networks, a couple days after my podcast is released, like on a Monday, they're up by like Wednesday. So you can listen to them there if you need to. I don't know why I needed to tell you that. I figured, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And if you're going to buy some shit off of Amazon, go to my website first, jimflorentine.com, and click on the Amazon button and shop from there. It helps with the podcast. I know I've gone over this a million times. I get it, but sometimes you need to be reminded with this stuff. You know what I mean? Um, Upcoming comedy tour dates before we get to the podcast. October 8th through 10th, the Funny Stop, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. October 16th, 17th, New Hope Cinema, New Hope, Minnesota. Um... I'll be in St. Louis at the Funny Bone, November 19th to 21. What else? Yeah, Hyenas Comedy Club, December 10th through 12th in Plano, Texas. Comedy Connection, Providence, Rhode Island, December 18, 19. Mount Airy Casino, Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania, New Year's Eve. And then I got a bunch of dates with uh, Don Jameson and Eddie Trunk. We do like a live version of that metal show in rock clubs and theaters and stuff like that. If you're into that metal show and want to Check that out. We're doing dates in um, Glendale Heights, Illinois, uh, Westland, Michigan, Buffalo, and Syracuse, New York in November. Just go to my website, jimflorentine.com. I don't feel like reeling them all off. It's aggravating, and it's, you know what I mean? All right. All right, let's get on with the podcast. I had great feedback from um, the band Ghost that I played last week on the podcast at the end of the podcast. So, yeah, it's a band out of Sweden called Ghost. Uh, check them out if you dig that, but that was on last week's. I don't remember what the fuck last week's was. Always oh, Gary from Florida. This week, um, I'm going to play a band called Royal Blood. I saw them open for the Foo Fighters over the summer. Two guys in the band, a drummer and a guy that plays guitar and sings. Um, dig these guys a lot. They got a, I guess it's their debut album. Just called Royal Blood. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're brand new. But I like these guys. They were they were great live. Just fucking seeing two guys up there, and, and they were good. So I'm going to play a song called Out of the Black, Royal Blood, off the Royal Blood record. But the podcast this week is going to be awful Facebook post part. I don't even know what part we're up to. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's just going to go on and on and on. Uh, just aggravating ones. You know, the usual the usual just drivel that people post on Facebook. And now to change the season is coming up, so there's going to be more and more weather ones, how people are mad at the fall and, you know, they want summer back, all of that bullshit. And then, God forbid, when the winter comes, I'm mad, I'm breaking up with you, my boyfriend's to some, all that fucking garbage will be addressed. And I love how you guys always pick them out and send them to my email. Here's another one about the weather. I hope it ruined your day. I get at least three of them a day. Comedy metal midgets at gmail.com is the address if you see any awful Facebook posts. And also the dating sites. I still want to do some more on that shit. You see any awful dating profiles or any of that shit, send them over to that email address too. So let's start this off. Awful Facebook post, part, whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter. Just more drivel of just mindless garbage. And then Royal Blood, the band Royal Blood, will be played at the end later. Don't you just love it <clears throat> when you post something on Facebook and you have those lonely, lonely people comment, Wow, I was sitting at home doing nothing. Thanks for the invite. Wow, if I would have known this was going on, I would have taken off from work. Oh, I definitely would have went to that. Geez, thanks for the invite. What? No invite? You think anybody's the guy that the people that write that, you think anybody's happy that you wrote that? Now you're like, ugh, now I gotta deal with this asshole. Now I gotta think of something. Well, hey man, we just uh, last second. 
made plans and we just went, man. Sorry. What, is that what a friend has to do? Before you send that out, do, you think that maybe you're just fucking bugging them and now they got to come up with an excuse. It's not going to make them happy that you wrote that. Yeah, I just want to let them know that I would have went. Yeah, all right. There's a reason you weren't invited. There's a reason your name or you didn't pop into their head when they decided to, I don't know, go to the ACDC concert and par- and take pictures of them in the park a lot having beers before the show. <clears throat> There's a reason you didn't pop in their head. You're not that close to them. You wouldn't be fun. You sound like a fucking pain in the ass. You sound like a drama queen. You sound needy. You pull that shit all the time. You know, a bunch of you go out, 80, and you got to worry about, uh, I hope he's going to be okay. That's why you weren't invited. You know, maybe a few of you want to move down on the floor at the concert and general mission be like, ah, I don't know if he's going to want to go down there. Is he going to be okay back up there? That's what you got to worry about, whoever that is. That's why you didn't get invited. Stop making people feel guilty. You're a fucking disaster of a human being. They got to be on Facebook to begin with bitching about that. And now you're trying to make your so-called friends feel guilty that they didn't invite you to whatever pictures they posted. Can't they just post pictures and just, you know, hey, I had a good time. I don't even like that to begin with. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. That's a whole other issue, but can't somebody just do that and say, hey, we're having a good time at the fucking ACDC concert without you trying to ruin it? It's not a guy's got to go back and read those comments and go, oh, shit, I forgot to, ah, man, he goes to his wife, oh, we forgot to invite Dave. Now he's bitching on Facebook, oh, geez, thanks for the invite. Ah, what are we going to tell now? I got to gotta call a guy. Really? Some friend you are. Maybe they just didn't want you to go. Get the fucking hint, all right? You know, if someone offered them ACDC tickets, they decided, hey, let's go see ACDC. They didn't go, wait a minute. What about they didn't think of you? It's not their responsibility to think of you. Ugh, so fucking pathetic, these people on Facebook with this shit. I've said this story before. My older brother tells his wife if she's taking pictures if we're out. Don't post that on Facebook. I don't want anyone to know where I am because I don't want to hear any shit that they didn't invite him. I love that. I love that about him. Fuck, man. There was just a whole other article on Facebook of how it's linked to depression. A whole big stuff. Another study. You're on there. You're checking things. You're getting alerts to your phone. If you're posting stuff and waiting to read comments and waiting for likes and see how many likes you got... And, you know, you got an alert coming to your phone if anyone hits like or a comment and you can go check it. You know what I mean? You keep looking like, oh, but ding, ding, ding going off on your phone. Seriously, you got depression issues. Go get fucking help. You do. Tell everyone that that when you're hanging out with someone, you hear ding, ding, ding going on their phone. What's that? Oh, it's an alert that comes to my phone from Facebook anytime anyone likes one of my posts or they comment on it. Tell them, say, you go get help. Go get help. Seriously. Did you see what Chuck wrote on Facebook? No. 
No, I didn't. Oh, you guys did say, say, say. No, I didn't. Hey, I sent you a message on Facebook. Yeah? Really? Okay. So, I'm here. We're face to face. What the fuck do you want? I guess you didn't get my message I sent on Facebook. No, I didn't. Dude, do you check your Facebook? No. I'm not a 16-year-old girl. I sent you a message on Facebook. I guess you didn't get it. No, I didn't. I didn't get it. I never want to get it. I don't even want to fucking be on there for more than two seconds. And I'm not. And I don't give a shit. Let me look at Facebook, see what's up. Ugh. Ugh. Feel bad for me. Look what I'm doing. I'm awesome. I'm great. Please like me. Please. That's all Facebook is. 95%. Please like me. Look how fucking amazing I am. I'm an amazing human being. Oh, feel bad for me. Oh, I just I just need some sympathy. 95%. That's all it is. 5%. Sister, you know, and a family moves out to Seattle, originally from New Jersey. She's got a couple kids. She's just got, like, family members as Facebook friends and really close friends. She'll post pictures. Hey, here's my kid fucking swinging on a bar. Yeah. Hey, my kid just said, uh, you know, uh, nano. Yeah, great. Here's a picture. She's, she's, you know, she ate with her hand for the first time. Fucking fascinating. Okay. And then, hey, and then the aunts and the fucking cousins see it. Oh, she's getting so big. Yeah. All right. I get that. I do. But you don't even have to do that anymore. You could send a picture right from your phone to their phone. All right, so we really we really could just eliminate that Facebook step. You know what I mean? Like, when I take a, a cool picture of my kid, I'll send it to, like, six people in my family. I'll forward the picture from my phone right to them, to their text, or sometimes to their email, and that's it. Doesn't have to fucking filter through Facebook. So we really don't even need that anymore. You know, you got to promote yourself. I go on there. I'm not happy about it. I'm not. Hey, I'm going to be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. This Thursday to Saturday. Here's the ticket link. Hope you can make it. Boom. That's it. Not, you don't understand how many nights I've been working on this new act. I I have to come up with a brand new hour of material because I shot a comedy special uh, uh, one year ago, and I can't do that material anymore. So I've been, you don't understand how much work it takes. I stay up at night. I listen back to my comedy sets. I record them all. I write down jokes. I listen. I'm listen. I'm this. I got my notebook out. I'm asking comic friends to watch my set and see if they can add any jokes or give me some advice on some new stuff that I'm working. You don't understand how tough it is. I go in New York City for. You know, on a Thursday night in front of 11 people and I get paid $25, $25. It costs 14 just to go through the tunnel, the fucking gas, the other tolls for $25 in front of 11 people that have no, that have no idea who the fuck I am and just stare at me because they feel like, oh, there's a, I can't even laugh because there's only 11 people here. You and I sit up there and they're just staring at me for like 20 minutes. You have no idea how tough it is. So please come to the stress factory and see me. I don't write any of that because I don't give a fuck. That's just part of working. That's the fun of the job. Why would somebody feel bad for me? 
They're going to spend four days in Los Angeles and San Diego doing shows. Ooh, God, that's fucking rough. I feel for you. Wow, you have to get on a plane? Yeah, yeah. I got to get on a plane and I got to sit for six hours. Can you believe it? That sucks. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Hey, yay. Tell your kids, tell your friends, tell your fucking your nieces, your nephews, whoever. Say, yeah, you don't really need Facebook anymore. Just if you got fucking pictures, just send them. What else? What else are you doing on there? You took a funny picture somewhere. You're at a party. Just fucking text it to your friend. You have their phone number. What are you? What are you going through there for? I just ran a five k today. Has there ever been anybody in the history of fucking running a 5K that hasn't posted it on Facebook? I want to know. I don't think so. Just give me one fucking person. Just ran a 5K today. I feel so good. Just one. You're fucking wonderful. Wow, you ran far. You're great. Hey, I'm all for it. You want to run for charity? Do all that shit. That's great. That's great. We don't really need to know how wonderful you are. Just go do it and keep your fucking mouth shut. How about that? Seriously, just go do it and keep your fucking mouth shut. How about that? If everybody really knows you, they know how wonderful you already are. You don't have to go on Facebook to go tell everyone. You don't. See, that's the problem. When you go on there, nobody really thinks you're that wonderful and you're just trying to get everybody's approval. That's the problem. The wonderful people, the people that do good stuff, are not on there bragging, go, I want to get a response because I'm fucking awesome. The people that are doing that, nobody thinks they're awesome and they're just fishing for people to tell them they're awesome. And meanwhile, they really don't think it deep down anyway, but they'll just say, you're amazing. That's so great of you. So nice of you to, you know, to donate your time to run a 5K on a Saturday morning. You think it had anything to do with maybe you wanted to lose some weight? You think maybe the summer was coming up and you wanted to fit in that a bikini? Or you're a guy, you wanted to lose that fucking beer gut because you're single again. You want to start banging chicks. You think that had anything to do with it? Or did you really care about that fucking uh, colitis run you just went you really care that guys that fucking people shit 12 times a day colitis did you oh because your uncle had it you don't give a fuck that much you started running a few weeks before to get in shape so you can make it because you wanted to lose the weight around your fucking gut and you wanted to fit in that bikini that's what it's all about all right and the, the the fucking guy shitting 12 a day 12 times a day having colitis that wasn't your real motivation i, I want to stop that you don't, I mean, maybe you care a little, but that wasn't the motivating factor to run your 5K. How you ran my 5K? Go, go do all the charity work you want. I encourage my son to do it. We fucking give away toys, whatever. Who gives a fuck? But we don't post it on Facebook. Look at the bag that we just gave away. Whenever he gets some toys, some new ones, we give away some old ones to kids that don't have toys. Isn't that great of us? Look at this bag. Look at my son. He's wonderful. He's picking out all... Yeah, I'll give this to a kid that doesn't have any toys. He's wonderful, isn't he? No. Even though I did just talk about it. I get it. I needed to use that for example. That's... We're not posting that on Facebook. We don't have to. What do you think people would say... If I did do that. Wow, that's great. That's so cool of you, man. That's great, man. You're doing a good deed, buddy. Ah, oh, fuck. Wow, just reading that made me feel so better about myself. Oh, that's right. You know what? I keep forgetting. I'm a fucking wonderful human being. I'm amazing. And just those three people that really don't even know me by writing that... God damn it, that makes me feel good. You know what? You could just feel good about yourself just to yourself. Does that fucking make sense? You know what I mean? 
You know when you do, you feel good about yourself that you just did something? You, yeah, I feel good about myself. Yeah. Can't you just feel that? Do you have to tell everybody else? Do you have to tell everybody what a wonderful fucking cook you are? And look what I did. I'm an amazing cook. And I can do this. And I can bake. And I can fucking run in a charity thing. Uh, and, and I'm a super mom because I fucking pick my kids up from school. And I feed them. Whoa. Yeah. You got to do all of that, huh? Please feel bad for me. <laughs> uh, here's a, you want to want a great feel bad post? Uh, uh, this chick, man, I'm t- man, I'm tired. I'm lucky if I slept an hour through the night. It's my own fault. I wasn't gonna take. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't going to the bathroom as I should, so I decided to take two laxatives early afternoon, so I still didn't go, and I have to watch that I don't get backed up. Now, this is a check writing this. My stomach is pushed to one side, so I have trouble, plus the meds. So I didn't go after the two pills. So before I went to bed, I took two more. Well, wrong thing to do. I have never gone to the bathroom so much. I'm lucky if I slept an hour. Won't do that again. So needless to say, my stomach is going crazy. Hey, but at least it came out. Sorry about all the detail. That's from a chick. First of all, you're not sorry about all the detail. You wrote it all. Why would you, you know, why, why are you apologizing? If you're really sorry about it before you posted it, you go, ah, I could take that line out. Let me take that out. Let me take that out. And let me take that out. But you didn't, so you're not re- really sorry for the detail. So fucking stop lying. Okay? You intended to write all of that shit, so everybody felt really, really, really bad for you. That's what this is all about. Nothing about, sorry about that, all that detail. You're not in one, there's not one fucking ounce of you that's sorry you wrote that. I'm all, I love fucking shit. And fart jokes and all that stuff. But I don't want a chick talking about all of that stuff. I really don't. That I, I don't even really, you know, I probably don't even want a guy talking about it. If I have to, I'll listen to it. But a chick? How you were up all night shitting? Your stomach is going crazy? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Imagine she wants to date some guy, you know, she meets him like a month down the road and he's like I gotta look this chick up on Facebook and he's reading all the posts and he reads that one he's like whoop alright I'm gonna lose that number fucking chicks dropping deuces left and right will it be any at any point am I gonna be able to you know have sex with her without worrying about oh, hold on I gotta go I gotta go drop a deuce Some guy um, <clears throat> made a sandwich, and then he, uh, yeah, he just basically made a sandwich with fucking cheese and walnut. He put fried egg and greens on it, put it on top of a waffle, and then he's like, I, he, he has a picture of it, of course, and he writes, partner... Partnered this bad boy with an alpine ale and garlic and parmesan tots. Absolutely epic. Okay, so you made that. You par- Now, is, is a sandwich really a bad boy? You partnered this bad boy. You know, his picture of his sandwich that he made with his fucking beer, with his waffle... And trying to tell everybody how it absolutely epic. So you're saying you're pretty much just fucking amazing. That's what you're saying. That you're amazing. Can we stop using the word epic? Seriously, let's stop throwing that around. It was epic. Epic. Oh my God, that was epic. Can we stop? 
All right. Can we leave that one to the nerds when they see the new superhero movie, when the new Star Wars movie comes out? Can we leave that for the nerds, please? Please. Get, the nerds started that one. Why don't, we don't need to use that one. Come on. It was that game with Epic. <laughs> what are we doing? You cook the fucking sandwich and put a waffle on top of it and you pour the beer and you're fucking wonderful. You're amazing. You're the best guy in the world. Oh, yeah. A guy took a picture of a big scar that he has on his uh, his wrist. It's really nasty. Cast is off. Free. Surgeons like permanent marker. What the fuck that means. And of course, oh my God. You ready for these comments? Ouch, ouch. You poor girl, what did you do? Surgery. And then she writes, cyst. I will pray for continued healing. Another one. Hope it feels better than it looks. Was any of that shit necessary? I will pray for continued healing. No, you didn't. You didn't. Why is everybody just lying? You're not, you didn't, you're not going to pray for continued healing. Okay. You're not going to be in a fucking church in a pew and someone walks in. There's only, you know, it's open in the middle of the afternoon. And when, you know, when you walk out, is everything, oh, I saw you praying. Is everything all right? Yeah. My friend, uh, you know, posted a picture of a, a you know, a scar she had on her wrist on Facebook. And I figured I, you know, I told her I would pray for continued healing, so I got my car and I ran down here and sat, you know, and kneeled in a pew in a church to, uh, you know, pray for a continued healing. I mean, she didn't say, why, what happened? Did it get infected? Was it fucking gangrene? Did it get, uh, you know, is that what happened? No, 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 no. It was just, she just showed a picture of her scar. Well, it's already... But did she say that it's not healing right and she might have to go in for more surgery? No, no. She just posted a picture and I just said I will pray for continued healing. Well, you're a fucking asshole. You're stupid. I will pray for continued healing. I think about my son have to have to grow up in this fucking nonsense. And I'll, I'll try my hardest to keep him out of it. I really will. I feel bad that he's going to be involved in this garbage. Here's a funny one from the girl. She writes, I'm sorry, Monday. But we have to break up. It's not me. It's you. And there's somebody else. His name is Friday. Oh. I'm sorry, Monday, but we have to break up. It's not me, it's you. And there's somebody else. His name is Friday. And one person clicked a like on it. Oh, I get it. You don't like Monday because it's the beginning of the week. You'd much rather Friday because then that's the start of the weekend. Is that where you're going with this? That that must be it. Oh, okay. So basically you don't like your job. You took some shit job that you didn't really like because you have no passion in life or anything else. So you just fucking settled just like you did with the fucking guy you married or the, the boyfriend you have. Or the ex-husband you have. You just settled. So you settled on some shit job. So you just can't wait till it's Friday. That what it is? I think so. That's why I think you're breaking up with Monday. 
sorry that every day can't be Friday for you. I'm breaking out with Monday. There's somebody else. It's Friday. That's that's just fucking wonderful. That's just amazing. That's what people are doing with their lives. You wonder why ISIS wants to cut our heads off. Seriously. You wonder why they're coming after us. It's because of this. This is what we're doing with our free time. This is what we're doing. Oh, here's um here's a woman bragging about how f- wonderful her husband is just to make all the other people a follower on Facebook envious and jealous and sad about their own relationship. Cuz that's all they're doing. Anyone that's trying to show how everybody how happy they are in their relationship to everybody else on Facebook is really just fucking going, "Hey, Fuck you. I'm lucky. I got it good. I know you got it shitty, and I just want to show you how good I have. Anyone that's a true friend wouldn't do that. Anyone would just think, oh, man, oh, oh man, that that couple doesn't get along. This, these don't. They don't. They don't. Huh? They don't really like each other either. They're ready to, for divorce. They're talking about it. He's already moved out of the house, and then you're there posting how fucking wonderful your marriage is. You think that makes anybody feel good? Who the fuck does that make feel good? Tell me. Couldn't keep that to yourself. Nope. Nope. Got to tell everybody. Make everybody else fucking feel like shit. You're good at it. You're good at making people feel like shit. So she writes, uh, woke up this morning and realized my husband had left little notes all over the house slash car from my birthday. It was fun finding them all. I love you. And there's little fucking post-it notes, pink ones. I can only, uh, you are beautiful. He put one on the, uh, on the Xbox. I don't know what the fuck that... They're all over the house, basically. There's five different pictures of them everywhere. You know, in the coffee pot. What do you do right here? This one's going to be... A, this, I bet you this is a good one. You are my everything on the coffee pot. Oh, he wrote little stick of notes all over on a birthday. You know why he did that. All right, let's break it down. All right, you're married, so you obviously been with her for a few years. You know what I mean? Maybe you dated two years. You married another two or three. You might even be at the, let's uh, do a conservative number, maybe the f- five-year, po- you're at the five-year mark with your wife that you've been with her. And it was a birthday, so you decided before you left for work, you would leave fucking little post-it notes all over for her. Little nice things. You know, shit that you can get out of any card in a store. I give my everything. You know what the bottom line is? And I hate to fucking break it to her. He ran out of gifts. And that's why he did that. He's got nothing else to give you, okay? Your fucking Christmas was three weeks before that. He had to fucking get nine different things. Valentine's Day is in another two weeks. He's got to worry about shit like that. Your wedding anniversary was fucking in November. He had to come up with shit for that. Okay? Mother's Day was in fucking in May. He's got more shit he's got to get you. Okay, so that's why he's like, fuck, man, I'm running out of gifts. Let me just write a bunch of little notes. Because I got nothing. I went to the well at Christmas and fucking blew my wad. I got nothing. I got Valentine's Day in three weeks. I got to deal with this shit, too. So let me just write up a couple of post-it notes and fucking trick her. Because I don't know what else to get her. 
I'll throw in a card and maybe we'll go to dinner for a birthday. But that's not going to be enough. She's going to say it. She's going to tell everybody. He's, he left all these cute notes. But then it's going to come back. It'll come back to haunt you. Yeah, there was one birthday where he just, you know, it was really nice. He left little notes around the house and I was finding them throughout the day. And then we went to dinner that night. But I mean, you know, there wasn't really a gift there. I mean, he did go out of his way to write the notes, and it was really nice because it actually came from him. Yeah, but that's not good enough. That's not fucking good enough. You need another fucking gift. That's all it's about. What kind of gifts does he get me? Yeah, I know. That happened to me one time on Valentine's Day. I was fucking low on gifts with my ex. And I got her this fucking, she wanted this nice, this, this really good shampoo and conditioner that cost like fucking $30, the big fucking container of it, that cost like 30 bucks a piece. So it was 30 for the shampoo, 30 for the conditioner. I got that. I wrapped it up with a fucking goofy card, a card that I didn't read because I know there's going to be good shit written it. Written it. I know they're going to write nice stuff. And you're the one they picked, that, 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 whatever the fuck it said. I picked it up at the last two minutes. I'm like, oh, shit, eight bucks for this? God damn it. All right, whatever. I got to deal with it. Fucking wrapped up the shampoo and conditioner that she really wanted but couldn't afford. Took her to dinner, but oh, fucking three years later. Yo, can you, one time on Valentine's Day, he got me shampoo and conditioner as a gift. Yeah, that's what you wanted. That's what you wanted and you couldn't afford. And you kept saying how your hair looked like shit. Oh, my God, I got to do something with my hair. It's a shitty shampoo. I really like this stuff. She had a little trial size. Oh, yeah, I'll get you. No, no, it's really expensive. Don't worry. Yeah, that was no good. I guess if I got you a fucking sweater that you wore once, it'd be fine. That would have, yeah, well, you know. No, but uh, yeah, I heard every time. Yeah, he got me shampoo and conditioner one time for Valentine's Day. What about the 17 other fucking days I had to get you Mother's Day, birthday, Christmas? A wedding anniversary. Valentine's Day. New Year's. Vacations. Oh, no. Yeah. Can you believe that? One time he got... Yeah, great. That's all you got. That's why fucking gifts are overrated. And stop bragging about them on Facebook. And if this guy didn't get her anything besides these little notes, it's going to come back to haunt him. I mean, the notes were nice, but... I know, because you're really going to like somebody better if they got you a fucking, a nice gift, a bracelet for $200. You're going to like, you're going to really like, I mean, like, I like him, I love him so much, but he got me that bracelet, and I fucking love him even more. All bullshit. All bullshit. Yeah, he got me shampoo and conditioner. Oh, speaking of birthdays, here's one. A woman, motherhood. When your days are spent caring about another human being so much that you forget when it's your birthday... Well, you obviously didn't forget it was your birthday because you just fucking posted it on Facebook. So you didn't forget it. If you were to post it just a week later and go, holy shit, I've been so busy fucking loving and caring for this kid I brought into the world. I didn't even realize it was my birthday and it's a week later. All right. So, you, But you remembered. So you, but, and you posted this. So obviously you remembered. So when did you forget that it was your birthday? How long, when you woke up in the morning, when it was actually your birthday, did you actually forget it was your birthday? Two minutes? Five? When you saw your husband or your boyfriend in the morning? Didn't he say, that was not the first thing he said to you? Oh, I forgot. Okay, yeah, well, you know, you woke up in a daze, and then maybe the kid got up in the middle of the night, and you're really fucking tired. And, you know, you hear your husband in the bathroom brushing his teeth. 
and you're up and you're like in a day, it's like, oh shit, it's it early. Oh, man, it's going to be a long day. And your husband walks out a minute later. Hey, honey, hi, honey, happy birthday. Oh, I forgot it was my birthday. You've been up for fucking 45 seconds. Okay, so what you're basically saying here is you're so fucking, you're so wonderful. You're such a great mother. You're just caring. You, you spent your whole day just caring about another human being so much that you forgot your own birthday. So you're just fucking awesome. You're the most amazing person in the world. You're going to get mother of the year. How come you're not on Time Magazine? I, I, I got this girl's name here. I, I'm going to look for you. I'm going to Google you every day to find out when you get mother of the year that you forgot your own fucking birthday. You are so wonderful because that's what you're supposed to do when you bring a fucking kid in the world. You're supposed to take care of them. That's what you're supposed to do. It's all about your kid once you decide to have that kid. And that's what you're supposed to do is take care of that human being as much as possible. As much. God forbid you fucking forgot your birthday for five minutes. Oh my God. You are so incredible. You forgot your birthday. Me and my son have the same fucking birthday, okay? And I don't give a fuck about mine. I tell everybody. They're like, what do you want for your birthday? I go, whatever you... I go, spend the money on my son. I don't want anything. Give it to him. He's fucking five. I don't need presents anymore. I never needed them. It's fucking overrated. I got the same friends since I'm first grade. They never get me a present, and I'm still friends with them. I don't get them a present. They don't get me one. Yeah, and this fucking douchebag writing this this guy on here, writing on Facebook, which none of my friends would ever do this. They're not in the business either, in the comedy business, just regular guys that I know. Not comedians. Um, guy, A guy writes this, if you don't like crunchy peanut butter, I'm not sure that we can be friends. I can really see a girl writing that. It's like, hey, you know, hey, 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 hey. all right, you know, that's something the girl would write. And I'm not putting down women by writing that. I'm just saying, though, that that's something the girl would write. You're like, all right, well, yeah, I mean, you know, like when a girl writes, oh, my God, that, you know, Sandra Bullock movie. I'm so glad she's back to romantic comedies because this one was probably her best. That's something the girl would write. And it's like, all right, yeah, well, that's something, you know, yeah, OK, no big deal. That's what she's into. She likes that shit. That's fine. But a man wrote, if you don't like crunchy peanut butter, I'm not sure we can be friends. And I think we still could. I really do. I don't think you're going to stop calling me. I don't think you're going to block my number if I should show up with creamy peanut butter to wherever you're fucking eating peanut butter. I really don't think so. I really don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think you ever denied somebody being your friend because they didn't eat crunchy peanut butter. I think you're lying here. Seriously, I think if I think if they showed up with creamy, you're gonna be okay with it. You go creamy. Oh, that's awful. Crunchy's the best. I like creamy. No, oh, oh, that's all. I hate creamy. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. Oh, no, cr- you gotta get the. Cr- you ever tried a crunchy? Yeah, yeah, I tried it. Uh, you don't like it? Nah, I mean, it's all right. I don't know. I, I like the creamy better. Really. That's the conversation. All right, well, that's fucked up, man. I, I'll stick to my crunchy. Yeah, well, I'll stick to my creamy. Fascinating. That's the whole conversation. That's it. Wow. You gonna stop calling him because he didn't agree with you? Because you're fucking creamy and you're crunchy? Are you gonna do that? I don't think so. I don't think so, dude. You know what? I'll keep checking your Facebook fucking page and see if you have you have 413 friends now. Let me see tomorrow. If you have 409, you eliminated four people because they didn't like crunchy peanut butter. I'll check every fucking day. That's what I'll do. Well, holy shit, he's down to 366 friends now. He's lost 62 friends in the last month. This guy means business. Not happening, motherfucker. You're on Facebook. You want every friend you could possibly get. So look at me. I'm popular. A guy wrote this one. 
Um, I've always wondered if the reason the Indians called their corn maize is because it tastes amazing. You didn't always wonder that. You really didn't always wonder that. I want to fucking talk to this guy face to face. I want to go, hey, man, you know, I'm sure you've been in a lot of relationship with different girls. Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, let me ask you something. When they come up to go, what are you thinking? Did you ever go, I got to be honest. I'm just wondering if the Indians call their corn maize because it tastes amazing. No, but we just had a bit, our biggest fight in the car on the way home. You told me to get out on the fucking turnpike. What's on your mind? Tell me. You're not, you're not communicating to me. No, seriously. That's all I've been wondering about. I don't even know what we were fighting about because I was just wondering about the fucking Indians calling their corn maize. And it's because it tastes amazing. I don't think anything else. I don't even know why I'm with you. I don't even think I, I don't even know you and I don't give a shit because the only thing that's on my mind because all I do is wonder about the fucking Indian's corn. Unnecessary post, unnecessary to write out and nobody gives a fuck. No, they didn't do it because of it because it's going to taste amazing. They didn't. Okay, motherfucker. And you know that. You know that. I'd expect that out of a five-year-old. Seriously, I expect a five-year-old. Dad, I expect my son to come up to me and say that. Dad, the Indians call it corn maize. Is it because it tastes amazing? I go, uh, 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 maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they did. I know. It does taste good, doesn't it? I love this corn. That's a conversation you have with a five-year-old. Oh, isn't this, this is sweet one this girl wrote. Listen to this one. That awesome moment when you look around and see everybody at the gym, see the hottest guy there, and then realize you're dating him. And then she put a little fucking smiley face, feeling spoiled. Aw. Aw. Yeah, how long before you start fucking another guy in the gym? How long? It'll be soon. Yeah, all of a sudden, your ex won't be the hottest guy anymore. Oh, here's a strong woman. Get ready for this post. Be ready. I'm going to do what makes me happy, and it's only to get more clear now. And then her friend writes, best mentality to have. And then, and then a guy writes, a guy sends a fucking, sends a, a picture over a Beyonce, and it says under it, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. All right, we're ready. You're only going to do what makes you happy, and it's only going to get more clear now. We're ready. All right, bring it on. I don't know why you weren't doing it before. What was holding you back? Huh? Spending too much time on Facebook? Not really fucking finding your own happiness? Is that what it is? Dealing with fucking Facebook drama? Dealing with these fucking assholes? Huh? Now you decided to be happy? That's good that you decided now. You know what I mean? Because you had a choice before. You knew you had a choice, but you just decided now. And I'm going to make it clear. Ooh. Ugh. Oh, all right. I, I got to read this one. You know what? Once I'm done with it, we'll just end this one because I, I don't even know what to say to this. But this is. <sighs> All right. I got to get through this one. This is rough. 
I feel like I'm doing like wind sprints and I'm fucking exhausted. I'm all gassed out. I can't, my fucking legs are sore and I got nothing left. I might even throw up and I'm like, you know what? I got to get through this one more. Let me just do it and get the fuck home and take a nap. So this chick writes it to her boyfriend or whoever the fuck he is. Husband or boyfriend or whatever. It'll be in the whole post. I normally don't get all blah blah on Facebook. But as I look back almost three years ago until now, I realize how much my life has changed. I met the most amazing man who has changed everything for me and has given me the life I've always dreamed of. I couldn't ask for a better job as a stay-at-home mom and that you ensure a roof over our heads and food in our bellies. But most of all, you're an amazing dad slash stepdad to her kids. The one kid, I won't name names, is so lucky to come into such a ha- happy, healthy home. And our kids just prove the love we really have. The way the kids' eyes light up when they see you or the dad that I hear all day long, you truly are an amazing dad. We may have our arguments. There we go. You got to throw that one in. We may have our ups and downs. You got to throw that one in. Got to always. It's fucking stock. It's hack. It's in every card. You have to throw that one in. You know, with the ups and downs we had on our map. All right. All right. I'd rather just one all bragging instead of fucking throwing that in. Okay, so it's not that great is what you're saying. I know we've had our arguments. Parentheses, even though I'm always right with a little smiley face, of course you're right. We still make a great team, and I love you more than you'll ever know. Never doubt the love we have because it's love that lasts a lifetime. Just wanted you to know, love you infinity, miss you, and can't wait to see you when you get home with three little hearts. What team do you make? Tell me what fucking team you're on. I don't know. I don't see two jerseys with your fucking, both of your names in the back. What team are you on? Okay, so you got two kids from another marriage. You married this motherfucker. Now you have a kid with him. So now you got three. Okay, so you're basically saying, hey, he pays all my bills. I stay home and he fucking pays all the bills. And that's why he's fucking awesome. And the kid sound the kid you guys have together sounds young. Okay, so it's probably with with under under a year in your in your uh, you know the kid's under a year. So that means your hormones are all over the place because when a woman has a kid the first year, they're fucking they're bipolar. Most of them hormones are crazy. After a year, everything calms down. If you can get through that first year. Everything's going to be good. That first year is usually fucking crazy. So this is what's going on. All the arguments you have, and this is one of those days you're like, oh my God, he's paying the bills. Thank God. And I got some fucking shit ex-husband that doesn't give a fuck about his kids, so now he's got to be their dad too. This guy sounds like a fucking saint. Ah, let me pay the bills, and then uh, there's two kids that aren't mine. Yeah, I'll fucking take care of them too. Because a deadbeat dad ain't gonna do it, and we, and you you know and you you know your new wife you know you guys have arguments and she's always right of course of course she's always right but I'm gonna go just go bust my ass and go pay all the bills and put a roof over her head who doesn't have a fucking roof over their head everybody's got a fucking roof over their head let's stop with that how would the house stand up if there was no fucking roof tell me it'd just be four walls and they'd fucking collapse all right everybody's got a fucking roof. And food in our bellies. Great. So you're out there busting your ass. Two out of the three kids aren't yours. You're paying all the bills. And then she has to throw in, by the way, whenever we argue, I'm always right. Oh, yeah, you fucking found the the woman of your dreams, motherfucker. I feel bad for you and even worse for them. And they'll they'll be fucking broken up in six months.